there's actually more similarity between the problem um, in Nigeria as it is in Brazil as well. So there are roughly 90 million adults in Nigeria that have um, improper access to credit or unequal access to credit. Brazil has 100 million. So we were looking for um, uh, another space that was that was as close to equate to Nigeria as possible. So Brazilian, Brazil and Nigeria share the problem in that particular perspective. Hi, my name is Adia Soho. Um, I'm the VP of Growth at Migo. You're watching Business Day Tech Bridge. I think that the difference between our company and perhaps some others is that we are trying to work with the existing systems and reimagine them with technology as opposed to trying to approach the existing financial markets with something completely new and, and separate. Right? So for us, we absorb non-traditional but existing data sets from the available institutions. We talk to the users that are already acquired by these very institutions and then try to include them financially using credit. So we often refer to ourselves as a credit as a service platform. Uh, so basically we take institutions with users and connect them to institutions that have the funds and wish to lend. So we sit in the middle. So we, are, we ourselves are not a lender. Uh, we ourselves don't necessarily own the customers that we serve. We serve customers with credit on behalf of the institutions that we partner with while also helping institutions that have capital which they wish to put to work, put it to work through the credit that we issue to these users. The good news for us is that uh, the, our partners were not on that list, so our partners did not get fined. Um, and I think that it's, it's easy to talk about lending, it's actually much harder to actually deliver on it and, and create a sustainable, sustainable business through lending, right? It's one thing to give away the money, it's quite another to get it back. So I think we can ask banks to lend, um, but, but really what are the barriers to, to doing this, right? Uh, it's very difficult to assess risk for somebody that does not have a financial or digital footprint, for someone that does not have identity, for someone that does not have um, a business that is backed by paperwork and good accounts. It's impossible, right? And then look at how big this country is and how many banks we have, how many risk officers, how many loan risk officers would we have to have in order to, to do risk assessments for the 100 million Nigerians that exist. That's a lot of people. So you must use technology. So I think uh, for us, there is room for collaboration. That is space that we continue to take up and, and sort of the, 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 what we continue to drive about our business and support our partners to achieving their own LDR ratio. I think Rome wasn't built in a day, and I think there are pretty decent policies in place now. I think BVN was um, phenomenal, uh, I think, for the fintech industry, right? So I think, in, in, you know, by giving users a bank verification number, you've created a single identity with which you can use to deliver value uh, and even you know pursue sort of uh, you know any sort of negative consequences as well before this existed there was no chance or hope for um, digital financial services to to take flight um, you know or for banks to even register uh, to even render deep financial services all the way out to the masses because logistically it's very difficult to, to have the brick and mortar to deliver the financial services that uh, a populace of our size uh, needs. So I think BVN has been quite the winner. We just need to give it a little bit more time to just continue to deepen its penetration and we can do that by adding more value, value added services like credit on top of the existing services. But was, Brazil is a pretty big uh, effort and, and on top of that, I mean, we've got 1 million users now uh, to whom we've granted 3 million loans. We still have 89 million adults that we need to try to, to reach in Nigeria. So we've only just, we've barely scratched the surface in Nigeria. So between Nigeria and Brazil, we've got our work cut out for us for some time. It's not that we're not looking, but we're not, we're not actively pursuing any other opportunities anywhere in the world, um, you know, at the moment until we sort of get further with Nigeria and Brazil. I feel like, um, I think that uh, people think they've heard from digital lenders now or heard all the digital lending propositions that are out there. I feel like 2020 is gonna, is gonna probably see a much wider proliferation of digital lending services.